back to 755 is real. I'm David O'Brien, Braves writer for The Athletic. And I uh, am with my co-host, former Braves left-hander, Eric O'Flaherty. What's up, Eric? What's up, Dave? Not much, man. We're uh, two weeks into spring training now. And or almost two weeks. And a couple, of, fast. a couple of positive developments. The only negative so far has been Mike Soroka's hamstring, but it doesn't look like anything serious. Of course, anything that sets him back is obviously a disappointment because he's competing for the fifth spot and he's made three starts in three years. So he can't really afford to fall behind a couple of weeks. Um, on the other hand, one of the, his main competitor for the fifth spot is Ian Henderson. And Ian today threw his first live BP of the spring and dude, he unveiled the new pitch. He's got his slider and it might be exactly what everybody was saying. He needs third pitch something with a little horizontal movement and goes the other way from the change up. Uh, and that's what it's doing, you know, comes out the same. And as you know, it, it's going the opposite direction of the change up and, and Olsen and Riley and both said that it's legit because it looks this tunneling the same and it comes out and at the end it splits a different way. Uh, it gives hitters so much more to, to have to cover, you know, most uh, that was the thing that, pitchers always said you know to me was you wanted to make x's on both sides of the plate and what that means is you want to be able to hit both sides of, a, of the plate with pitches going both directions you know a pitch fading away from a righty and a pitch coming into them uh -huh. so you so you can throw it where it starts off the plate and comes back for a strike or you can start it on the plate and it runs off and with that you know that winds up being x's on you know both sides of the plate um that just gives hitters so much more to cover uh and if if it looks the same, if it, if it comes out of your hand the same, then you put them in a position where they have to start guessing which side of the plate, you know, they're trying to cover. Cause it's right. important when a guy can make X's on both sides, it's impossible. And he has good stuff. It's impossible to just read and react because right. so many pitches look like balls and come back for strikes. Um, but when you don't have that, when everything's going one direction or, you know, I think in Ian's case, the curveball was more of, it, it wasn't an effective, out pitch it was right. just kind of a show me maybe get a free strike early in the count type of pitch and, and he wasn't getting called strikes with it it's tough on a 12-6 yeah. you yeah. know i mean if they had the automatic strike zone that might be different and i hope straight they overhead delivery yeah i mean that that causes a lot of problems by itself but um when the ball's just going one direction hitters can basically eliminate a side of the plate or at least the type of movement you know they can be like i'm just looking out over yeah. And if it winds up being a change up coming into me, I can just pull it. But once you start making those X's on both sides is when a lot of pitchers take off. Yeah. What he was most happy with, um, I think he was downplaying the slider. He probably didn't want to build expectations. But when I was talking no, to him a couple days ago, play. yeah, he was building <laughs> up the fact that he thinks he regained that ride on his fastball. Right. Because he said last year, you know, because I, I said, do you think it's a case of, you know, you have to adjust to hitters now because – you came in and nobody really had seen your straight over the top delivery in a while. You know, like they said, right. it's like the mechanical, the mic, uh, the delivery pitching machine, iron mic, uh, iron mic. Yeah. And, uh, and really he's a two pitch pitcher basically with the fastball change up. He had that, uh, that curveball, like you said, but really nothing, nothing to give hitters a different look. And they, once they knew what he was about and they got a little used to that delivery and they knew they don't have, they could, what to look for with that change up, just spit on it. You know, he's kind of not a whole lot left to, to go to. So now he has his slider. And like he said, fastball also looked good today. He looked good on the mound. He's in good shape. Uh, he really looked good. Uh, and, and he faced some good hitters. He faced Riley, Olsen, uh, Azuna, and, and uh, Harris. Yeah. And I know it's first, second week of camp and hitters are always behind, but uh, he looked good. I mean, compared to the other pitchers that have thrown the last couple of days, of course, Strider was just untouchable yesterday, but um, yeah, I uh, he's probably already throwing 98. Hitters at least for that. he was unbelievable yesterday, dude. He was just blowing guys away, but I thought Anderson looked really good. And that, I mean, that could be huge for the Braves. If he's back to being what he was, as a if he's a solid starter, number three and he's pitching in the five hole. Right. If you've got Charlie and him at four or five, that could be the best four or five in the league or the baseball. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and 
So that's that's the that's the big positive I, I, I've taken out of the last couple of days, and the fact that Spencer Strider just looks so good. He's in great shape, and uh, man, it's just electric. I don't worry about Day him. Day one, electric. If you're not going to have a third pitch, you want to have Strider's fastball. You know, that's yeah. another option. <laughs> and he threw a couple of change-ups yesterday, too. They both were really quality pitches. Well, he made guys he, – he was facing Acuna, uh, Ozzy. Uh, I forget now, but he just – yeah, he blew away every – he blew away Acuna, you know. And Acuna plays yeah, the winter ball. Yeah, been playing. He plays the winter ball, yeah. yeah. He just he, – he's something else. And Freed looked really good. Freed looked really good. He got rushed on one pitch – that early on the pitch clock is going to is going to get some guys because when it, they look up they see it and I, uh, Spencer told me this morning the only problem you run into is if you and the pit and you you want to shake off the catcher you know and with the uh, yeah and with pitchcom the catcher is so used to doing it and not rushing is enough that if you have to change pitches all of a sudden that fifteen seconds is gone yeah and you can't you can't just step off the mound. So you only have 15 seconds? 15 seconds with no runners on base from the time the pitcher catches it, 15 seconds. And it was running on some guys. It was going right yeah. to the wire on every pitch <laughs> yeah. they threw. Well, 15 – I thought it was 20. 15 is pretty tight. 20 with runners on base. I think guys that, that get a lot of credit for working pretty quick are right between that 10 and 15 range. Yeah. Like it Elder, is. it was no factor. Elder was like boom, 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 yeah. boom. But like uh, – who was it that pitched yesterday? Uh, Mentor? Uh, was yeah, like he's got a little setup. Every everyone was right up for a free. Everyone was right up against it. Mental, yeah, everyone was right up against the. You know, they got they have to be in their delivery. At zero, it doesn't have to be out of their hand. They have to be in their delivery. I, I wonder if guys are gonna, you know, if it comes down to it, start your wind up and be shaken still in a nice slow wind up. So, so, <laughs> but what Free did, you know, he uh, he got rushed on one, and he kind of—I don't want to say panic, but they're trying to do it right. Even there's no penalties. I mean, he could have just stepped off the mound, but they're trying. Yeah, to that's do it what right. I was wondering. There's no penalty. You, you know, they're bad so running, or I they're mean, but in the practice. game though, if you're too slow in the game, oh, it's a ball. It's a ball. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Well, you, know, it's a. It, it, they're, they're trying to do it from day one. They have the pitch clocks up and everything. So, Joe, you know, he kind of got rushed at the last minute because they were they were changing. Uh, he was shaking off Darno, and he didn't get a new pitch in time. So he was like, "Oh, should I step off?" And instead, he loaded up, and he wasn't loaded up, and he threw the pitch anyway. And Acuna crushed it for a home run. Did he? <laughs> yeah. So that he just threw a bad pitch, and then uh, Freed's like, Man, "You know," but that was the one glitch uh, in the two days. Uh, today Ian ran out of time one time too, and he like stepped off and, and to stop it. And and uh, Kranitz goes, Nope, you can't stop it. And so he jumped back on the mound. He like thought he could just kind of step off, like, What do I, what do, I do? He's like, Nope, you can't. You know, you got a different to, element. I mean, you live, I mean, you play your whole life without ever, right? What you could do is have if you could get the catcher to come out. Like if you know you're running out of time, you get the catcher to come out. That's not considered a penalty, and the catcher gets five mound visits in a game. They give you an extra one in the ninth inning. So the no, catcher, so you can a waste a mound visit, but you don't get that ball. So or a balk if there's a runner on base. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. But the guy, so far they look like they're adjusting pretty quick. We haven't seen any of the really slow guys. Uh, yeah, well, Freed was pretty slow last year, actually. So um, he was one of the slower ones of them. Kenley obviously was off the charts. He was like third. Yeah, all the. Well, that's that's those guys are the reason. The I don't guys know how Kenley's going like to do it. Thirty-five seconds between pitches are the reason that's there. Yeah, and with pitch calm, if you have to shake off a pitch, it's not as fast as like Spencer was saying. Well, you're yeah, fast, it's just you're faster thing. with the signs. You know, they gotta. You're faster with the hands if uh, if 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 you're running out of time, but with the guy on second base, you know they don't want to do that. But so they're they're working through that, how to do it and all that. I'd assume though, like you know, any team that had an operation going with so many teams going to pitchcom, that's probably all shut down by now. Yeah, I would you know. Think so so if, too. if you had to, if you were running low, you had like five seconds left, and you don't want to sit here and push buttons and try to work your way through the other three pitches the guy's got. You could just throw down some yeah. fingers occasionally. And I, that'd be, if I was a pitching coach, that's what I'd tell the guys like, Hey, if it gets tight, just use fingers. Cause they're, they're not going to have their system set up with everybody using pitch. Code. 
you got to think there's going to be times when a pitcher just kind of panics at the last second and doesn't want to get caught, so he throws the fastball or whatever, or, or gets crossed yeah. up with the catcher, you know? Yeah. Maybe, maybe he tells the catcher, if all else fails and this thing goes to hell, I'm going to, that's my pitch I'm going to throw, you know, if I have to rush. Be, be yeah. prepared for the fastball. I don't know. You just go high fastball and see if they chase right. it, but not throw anything in the zone, you know, because it's the wrong pitch. But, but with like Strider, shit, you better know that fastball's coming. <laughs> it has to be. You cannot, you cannot, th- like, you can't throw a catcher a pitch w- that's not a fastball if they don't yeah. know what's coming. Yeah. I mean, if, if we can't get on the same page and I got to just rush and throw something, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think you could still have the plan B, whether it's like a, show me fastball off the plate or something up and in something that serves a purpose. So you're not just blowing a pitch and just wasting a ball, but you could try to have some effect with a high fastball or something away off the plate. You, yeah. you definitely don't want to throw, throw it right down the middle. Yeah. Uh, Charlie last year was slow with runners on, but not with no runners on. So he didn't have a problem today in the BP either. You know, he was, he was working pretty quick. Uh, so yeah, the guys that are pitched so far on, on the stadium field have looked good, huh? The pick over would reset it, right? So with runners on, you just keep yeah. going first. Yeah, but you've only got two pickoff throws. Oh, uh, that's right. <laughs> per plate appearance. Yeah. Now, if a guy gets on first, you burn him. And advances are <laughs> no. If you if if uh, if a guy gets on first and advances, it resets. You get two more. Right. And you can do a third, but if you don't catch the guy, it's, it, he advances. It's a walk. In other words, if he's on first and you've already got it, it twice. Got it, got it. Yeah, I was going to say, because they could just look at 19. They could just take like, off. Okay, well, he's got to go at 20. They could take yeah. off. So yeah. if they do that, you can you can throw over, but you got to get him or he advances. So, and that's what I wrote about today with uh, – I was watching. Uh, the most impressive thing I've seen so far in camp, hands down, was on Monday, Monday morning they had the catchers throwing all the bases. They have like eight catchers throwing all the bases. Sean Murphy – is so much quicker and throws so much harder and more accurate than any of the other catchers. And they got some pretty good arms on their catchers, and Darno's not a slouch. Sean Murphy, dude, is phenomenal. Uh, Sal told me Sal told me that Langoliers has the best arm that he's seen in the modern era. Langoliers, the prospect. He said he's got the best one. He goes, Sean, if we don't grade uh, zero to 80, but if we did, Langoliers would be an 80 and and uh, Sean would be 75. He goes, just a tick behind him. He goes, it's right. very good and it's powerful and it's accurate. Well, if you're just a tick behind the best arm he's ever yeah, seen, that's, exactly. that's a cannon. It is a cannon. I mean, he throws to, and, and here's the thing they were doing. Instead of just throwing to second, third, they were throwing to first. And it got me thinking. I'm thinking, okay, they're gonna be they're gonna be with him. They're gonna be doing a lot of pickbacks, a lot yeah. of back picks. The back pick can be so critical. Oh yeah. In the, with the new rules, if you got a catcher that can keep that guy at first by throwing over there five, there's unlimited throws for catchers. Yeah. Now most catchers, you don't want to risk that, you know, very often to throw it out in right field. The guy goes third, but I didn't see Murphy miss the glove by more than this much. Any throw and his throws are lot low and bullets. It's like Sal said. I said, Man, that pitcher better get out of the way and stop. Yeah, that's what I just thought. There's some guys like that yeah. where when you got one of those, it was kind of like that with Rossi because he threw it just his line right. was right at your head, right? So that's what I said. You just duck. Sal said his aiming point might be his belly button, yeah. And and I, I said, I said to Kyle, I said, Yeah, he's not going to be like, he's not going to be just like get out of the way. He goes, Yeah, it's not duck. With him, it's get off the mound. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you figure out which guys no, you need to just. There's book no it out arc there at all on the throw. There's no. It looks like a pitcher throwing, and he throws so low for a guy six three. He throws it low. Does he have a low arm angle? Yeah. Okay. He does. If you look at some some pictures of him throwing, he's got a short, quick release, kind of like a Dan Marino release for a baseball player, and it is, boom, you know, and he and he gets low in his knees when he throws. Yeah. And he gets up quick, so the comp, so it's a combination of all that is it's low. He releases it, and it is I'm man, it gets there a, in a hurry. A picture of it, or th- I haven't seen him. I barely seen him play. Yeah, it gets there in a hurry. It, it is, uh, it's impressive, really, really impressive. He's gonna, I guarantee, in the first couple of weeks before teams, when teams are you know trying to trying to uh, push the envelope with the new rules, 
and you're going to get some young guys, some fast guys that are going to try to steal. He is going to pick off a couple of guys in that first couple of weeks. I guarantee you with that. It's it's Back nice then. having a catcher like that. You know, it, where like for me, when when Rossi was catching, I felt like if I just keep him close, I'm good. Yeah. You'd have some other guys, you know, on uh, definitely on other teams or, or coming up through the minors, there'd be a catcher that could crush and they just had a garbage on. And, you know, I mean, even in the minors that gets around. So teams are like, dude, yeah, you don't even need a lead. Just take off. He can't hit the, you know, he's not going to hit the target most likely. And he's throwing changeups out there. And as a pitcher, that just puts so much more pressure on you to keep him close. And as soon as you get distracted with a runner, you leave one middle and it's in the gap. Yeah. So that'll be nice for the pitchers to have. He threw out 31% last year, and it should have been a lot higher, but they have a lot of – Oakland had a lot of pitchers that were really slow to the plate. And I asked him about it, and this is the kind of guy he is. He was like, yeah, I made some I made some bad throws, though. I could have been – I could have made some more accurate throws. He he didn't use any – this this guy is totally accountable, man. That's what I miss. I miss being in the clubhouse and hearing him just, you know, motherfucking – these – assholes on Oak last year, you know, talk about his pictures he had and why he couldn't throw them out. Yeah. And then you come over with the microphone and they say the right thing. But <laughs> I, I miss, I miss hearing the real, the real <laughs> scoop and how they really feel about it. But with, 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 uh, with the, with the new rules, he said, he said, yeah, I think guys are going to run a lot. I hope so. He goes, I love throwing it's action. He said, he loves it. He said, yeah. cause I love seeing my team run and because I can't run, but I love seeing my team run and I love throwing. And I swear, man, the new rules, I think the Braves are in position. I mean, Alex, this is this could end up being the ultimate shrewd move by Alex to make this trade. Because those rules went into place in September, they announced them, but nobody really paid attention until after the season. Because you know, you're not you're not worried about next season until after the year. Right. Alex, meanwhile, makes this trade. And there's no way he makes that trade when he did. He kind of he said, Ah, oh, the guy became available now. We didn't know if he'd be available a year from now. You know, they did it because of these rules, I guarantee you. I mean, they wanted Contreras. As big a bat as he's got, they are they would have killed him with these new rules, Contreras, I think. They would have been running all over him. The yeah. difference, the difference in these guys catching. And it's just going to be really important to have a great catcher back there for all these rules with handling the pitcher. You know? Yeah. Guy that communicates great with the pitcher, with the clock, with the clock running down, and all the new rules that are in place. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna take a really smart and really good catcher to to really prosper under this. And meanwhile, on the other side of it, the Braves have got four guys, to my estimation, who are capable of stealing twenty five or more bases: Vaughn Grissom, Ozzy Albies, Ronald Acuna, Michael Harris the second. Those guys are all twenty five or more steals. Uh, if you look at Vaughn Grissom's numbers in the minors last year, it was like twenty seven out of thirty one before he got called up. He didn't do a whole lot here, but he's got that speed. The other guys. We know what they've you got. You already know with Ozzy and Acuna. Ozzy was like 20 out of 24 a couple years ago. I mean, Harris, Harris had last year. He started out like 19 for 19 before he even got caught. Shit, yeah. Yeah, he ended up like 20, 22 in his in his two-thirds of a season. And Acuna would have had 40-40 in 2019 if he didn't uh, strain his hamstring that last week. Right. He couldn't run at all that last week. He ended up 37. It's so, so easy to take this team for granted. So you could have – I mean, if these guys all stay healthy – and that's a big if, but if they all stay healthy and they exploit these rules, bigger bases, the, the limited pitch that throws over, some of these teams with bad catchers are really going to be screwed. I mean, you can, you might have three guys with 35 or more steals, four guys with 30, who knows? So it's going to be really interesting. That could be a big part of their game with half your lineup is good base stealers. Yeah, basically. Four of your eight guys. If, if Grissom's a shortstop, I'm assuming he is. So it's going to be interesting. I think they could really – they're in position to really uh, benefit from these rules because of that trade. I mean, that was that was a great trade. It, and people are going to realize it when they see this guy catch. Talk to the pitchers who've thrown to him so far in live BP or bullpens, and they said, oh. Ian said, oh, he's a great target. He's huge back there. He's got wide shoulders. He's six foot three, and he's really good framer. He goes, so if you get – he's so wide that if you get it, anywhere on the plate or just off of it, he's going to make it look like a strike. Yeah. He said he really is good to throw to. So and he's a great block. And I mean, it's just, this is, this is going to be, it's going to be big 28 years old and signed for six years now. So. Yeah. And getting a chance to, to win, 
you know, coming yeah. coming from Oakland to the facilities the Braves have. Yeah. And and being on a team that's won the division. You you play with I mean it's exciting to to join yeah. this. And he's not gonna and have to is. be a big guy and carry the team. This guy is all business, man. Is he? Yeah, everybody says great guy, pleasant, really nice guy, but he is all business. He's studying. He is he drives a 2008 Ford uh, or Chevy truck. Oh, those are my guys. Uh-huh. I love those guys. Like Billy uh, Wagner. Scott Linebreak. This was like 2010 or 11 when we were teammates, was still driving the 95 F-150 that he bought with a signing bonus. Yeah. Drove his whole That's this guy, game. man. I love those guys. Yeah, he is. He's blue collar, as Sal said. He is, it's a blue collar approach. No distractions. Yep. So I love. He said, "I love this kid, man. I love working with." Him. Eddie said, "I hated. The, I hated to see Contreras go because he was one of my boys." He goes, "But I love this kid. Eddie's yeah. really. Eddie loves working with him." Eddie yeah. said, "You know." Eddie said, "You know what? We threw a lot back when I was there, but that's been lost. They stopped doing that in the minor leagues. They took it away from them." He said, "We used to throw a lot." He goes, remember uh, Javi throwing out Manny Ramirez at first base in the 95 yep. World Series. And Eddie said, we used to throw the third. We used to back pick, but they got away from that. Nobody, no, nobody's been doing it recently, but the Braves haven't been doing it at all. He said, this year with this guy, we're going to take advantage of it. They're throwing all the bases and workouts for the first time. Eddie said, he told Snit, he goes, you know, those throws, those back picks, those throws are, are signal from the manager. So you got to give this guy the signal a lot. Oh, it's so nice too as a pitcher. Like, I know those days that you don't have it, and you know, there's days where you just know, like it's going to take some luck to get out of this thing. And you got first and second, two outs, and the three hole hitters up. And somebody gets a little too far off the bag at first. Yeah, and they back pick them. It's a just great just play. Like, oh man, I could really do a lot for a team. Yeah, especially for a third out. If we, that's what I mean when you when they bail you out of a situation where you. No, you're 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 scrapping today. You know yeah. it's going to take like a line drive right at somebody right here for me to get out of this thing or a hard ground ball. And I, like I just need a, a fielder to be in the right spot, and then they yeah. back pick or they try to double steal or do something like that, and they throw them out third. When you have a catcher with a good arm that gets you out of trouble like that, I mean it it can change a yeah. whole month for you. You know you could go into a tailspin from there, and then you're out of it, and it's like oh shit, that was supposed to be my bad day. Now I'm off. You know I'm, I got out of jail free. And really fire up the team going to bat the next inning. Yep. I mean, they come off the field pumping. Well, they, 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 going, can Let's go. when, they can see when that reliever comes in. You know, yeah. <laughs> a little off. Yeah. It ends that inning faster than anybody thought it was going to end. Yep. So, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty pumped about seeing this guy. I mean, it's, it stands out. I mean, people might say, yeah, how much better can he be than this guy or that guy? It stands out, you know? Yeah. And that's hard to do with catching, catching drills. Yeah. But it's like, if you had no idea, which guys were which, and you watch you like, oh, you'd watch him that and be guy. like, that, that oh, yeah. one's, yeah. The throws that one's are just like, I, I didn't watch enough of Langoliers, I guess, in spring training, but I did see him do some workouts. I mean, personally, I don't remember his throws being quite that good, but I'll take Sal's word on it because he's the guru of yeah. catching. But I haven't seen anybody throw much harder than this guy ever. I mean, <laughs> more accurate. And just on the, the, the couple of days that I've seen him do those throws. I mean, guys like BMAC and Rossi were really good back there, really good. But this guy's throws are like a pitcher back there. Those yeah, I, I play with a guy, uh, Rob Johnson, that kind of bounced around. And then Betancourt, too. There's been a couple catchers they've tried to make. Right. Betancourt had that kind of arm, but it just wasn't accurate like this guy's. Right. And that's the key is there's, there's some catchers with cannons, but they have a weird arm slot or it tails a ton. They can never hit the bag. Yeah. And then there's guys that are just – I mean, it's – it's like they're just shooting a laser. It's just yeah. and right it's at where they want release. it. release. It just reminds yeah. me, because I covered Dan Marino at the end of his career, it reminds me of the baseball equivalent of that, how fast it is. It zips. And it's whoop. But, uh, yeah. And the dude, the dude's got shoulders like Andre Dawson, just squared, like a, like a, like you could hang a, a – it's like a rack. It's like a hanger. <laughs> he does. Squared. Like James Conn's shoulders. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Man, yeah. They're, they're, anytime you get, is he fast? How's his? How's he's his athletic? Speed? He's pretty yeah. athletic. He's not fast, but he's athletic. Yeah, I mean, he had tons of doubles the last couple of years. You get those lanky, athletic catchers, and they, you know, it's it's also like the the throwing motion of theirs for me is one that builds a ton of arm strength. Just that short, compact. You're using your shoulder more than your elbow. 
Yeah. Uh, those type of throws, guys that have those good, clean arms, man, it's so nice to have. It, it, it's too, it's almost too bad that there's no more collisions at home. Cause I'd like to see this guy take one. Cause he can take one. <laughs> he could take a collision. That's for sure. And come out on the good end of it. So, but anyway, um, two more days and I play a game, man. That's it goes by so much faster. Yeah. Like, cause I feel like they just started. Yeah. They but just started when full squads, but everybody's come yeah. so early that, that most guys have been here for, you know, a week or two weeks when you're and they in, come camp, in a great shape. Yep. They come ready. So it's not, it's not scary to start them. That's why Snit said most of the vets will play Saturday. He goes, because they yeah. come in in great shape. They've been here. Most of them have been here for a week or two. They want to play. So yeah. he'll play all the guys, a couple of bats. He's not going to drag them over to the – they got a road trip to the East Coast, like in the second week to the other side of Florida. Brutal. And send nobody to that. Spend the night. And you, it's no easy way to get there from here. I mean, that's a, that's tougher from here than it was from Orlando. Yeah. Here you got to go under or over the lake, Okeechobee. So, yeah, they're not taking anybody over there. So they're going to have that break too for the WBC, right? I mean, is this this is a longer camp, or are they keeping it? Um, no, they don't get a break for it. They send those guys. I mean, the guys do. Yeah, yeah, it's a longer camp, a couple of days longer. Yeah, for the guys, WBC got here like three days early. Okay. So for the other guys, it's just a full camp. It's not really a longer one. They're going to play a couple of games against the Dominican and Puerto Rico here. Yep. So, but yeah, those guys leave on the sixth. So they'll have time to play them here for, you know, 10 days, 10 days of games or whatever, except Trump. He's on the, he's got to go to Taiwan. So he's leaving <laughs> like the first. Can you imagine? He's no, going to be playing for the Netherlands. Tough, man. He's going tough. to fly over there halfway around the world or whatever to play two games, basically, because they got no chance. Play those two games. Well, you know, maybe he's, that's away. worth it to have that jersey and get to represent, oh, yeah. your country, but it jacks up your spring training. You know, switching time zones like that right. for that short period, coming all the way back. Yeah, but he's not competing really for a spot on the opening day. That's Rose. what I was thinking. Is it's not a huge deal because it's yeah. not like it's going to cost him a spot. So if you're tired for a couple of weeks and going to AAA anyway, who cares? Right. You know, you get that jersey. Right. So, but uh, uh, interesting, Colby Allard. Old friend Kobe Allard will be starting Saturday. Against the Braves? Yeah, no, for the Braves. Oh, for the Braves. He's back? Yeah. They no traded. Way. They got – yeah, it was easy to, to not to forget that one. They got him in that Odorizzi trade. When they sent Odorizzi to Texas and paid Odorizzi $10 million of his buyout. Right. To go, right. To, uh, they, uh, they got Kobe Allard back in that deal. They like the metrics on Aller. They think they're better than his numbers over there have indicated. He started some games for the Rangers. He's just one of those. They used 11 starters last year. He's one of those guys that'll get, you know, because they got, because they traded Muller and they got traded a few of those guys. So I'm sure we'll probably see him make a spot starter too. But uh, I talked to him the other day. What pick was he? He was 14 or 15 overall, right? He was, he was picked higher than he should have been, but he was a huge prospect coming out of high school, (laughs) but he came up with all those guys. All these guys that are now part of the yeah. uh, of these division title teams, he was with all these guys, Max and Soroka and Acuna. He played with them like at every level in the minors, basically. Got it. So it, it, being a scout would be tough. Yeah. Have, having one of those picks, you know, I, I used to always look back at certain drafts, you know, because the Mariners had drafted so bad for like five or six years and it, it ruined their farm system. That yeah. There was guys like, you know, Linscom and, and Ryan, Bra- they passed on certain guys and you look at drafts and it's like the year he was 14 or 15 overall. If you look around those guys, like they're just surrounded by studs and then yeah. you're the one guy that doesn't hit. It's so hard to scout that though. Um, another guy that Snit watched today stood out was, uh, Allen was the 14th overall pick Cam said, mm-hmm. um, Another guy Snit pointed to today. Snit didn't come to the main field. He went on the backfield to watch BP today, and he saw uh, Lukey throw and Nick Anderson. Remember, Nick Anderson was a stud with the Marlins for yeah, a year. Yeah, he was He was really good. Uh, but Lukey, last couple of years, has put up great numbers with New York. He's like 34, soft tosser, great numbers. You know, third lefty. And Snit watched him and said, yeah, he's a really interesting guy, man. He was he, – he's." He looked at his numbers and uh, he said, they were pretty good numbers the last couple of years. I'm like, I'm pretty good, man. They were great yeah. in that division. Yeah. So, but, uh, dude, he says throw hard, right? No, no, yeah. like 88, 90. 
wait, wait till you see if you get a chance to see a picture side by side of Lukey and Nick Anderson. It is the second coming of the Culberson Swanson. They are they could be twin <laughs> brothers, twin really? brothers. <laughs> Don't snip that. I was like, yeah, these guys are new Culberson Swanson, and Snip made some comment along the lines of. Yeah, they don't look like Swanson and Goldson. No, <laughs> kind of on the lines of <laughs> they they <ain't> models, <laughs> right? <laughs> but they look exactly alike. They got the same body. They're like six three, slender. They got shaved heads. They got the same beards. I mean, it is it's a spitting image, man. And their lockers are right beside each other, sixty one and sixty three. It's nuts. It really is. One's lefty and one's righty, though. That's how you could that's that's how you won't get confused. But really it's crazy how similar they look. But Snit was just like <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, let's not get carried away with this Swanson <laughs> Kobe. <laughs> Who both look like actors, you know. I love Snit. Yeah, it's uh it's been great. I mean, it's a it, it, the camp is just it, it's a reminder with the great facilities, especially, but it's just a reminder how far they come in the last few years because they used to go to camp and you know, they're trying to find this is fill this spot and that spot with these unknowns or guys they picked up here and there. And, you know, you don't know how good they're going to do and all that. And you've won five straight division titles. And it's just a different air about a team. Yeah. Man. You know, even though they lost in the first round last year to Philly, it's exactly the same air as it was last year when they were coming off the World Series. To me, it feels the same. And even though Dansby's gone, I think they've had so much success. And last year, they didn't panic when they lost Freddie and they still won right. the division title. So you're really not even hearing people talk about Dansby unless we ask about it, you know? Right. They're just focused on going ahead, moving ahead. Well, yeah, you're not getting hung up on that at all as a yeah. player. You know, you know? I think – Clubhouse doesn't feel any different You get all. so used to – you know, especially coming up through the minor leagues, like some of your best friends just get released. And it's kind of like you get released in baseball, you're just gone. Yeah. yeah and you go to other organizations, it's kind of the same thing, but – it's not like you forget people exist, but it, right. you get really accustomed to just focusing on the group you have, yeah. what's going on here, and we'll worry about so-and-so when we play them. And a lot of times, you know, I'm sure there'll be some Braves that the first time they play the Cubs, they'll find out how Dansby's season's going when they look up on the scoreboard, see his average on the Jumbotron. Yeah. You know, because that's just kind of how it goes. You stay so focused on the unit you have, your division, the teams you're playing, um, it's it's really easy as a player. You don't you 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 learn not to become attached to people. Whereas a fan, I think you know that's where a lot of the joy is is connecting and getting to know the players and watching their careers you know play out and happen. Yeah. The attachment as a player is just like, all right, see you, dude. You know, like we'll hopefully we're teammates again or we'll play some golf one day. But there's no, I miss this guy. Yeah, that reminded me of the story that uh, I think it was Harold Reynolds told it on MLB Network. Uh, about uh, oh, one of the brothers that played for uh, for the Yankees. I can't think. The colorful brothers. The one that wore the gold bikini underwear. You know the guys are talking about. One was a Giles. great hitter. Huh? <laughs> no, Giles, who no, was it? the Yankees, man. One was ended up being a steroid guy. Giambi? Yeah, the Giambis. So one of the – God, I can't think. One of the Giambis was like leaving or whatever. And he was tight with one of the guys on the team. I think it was Giambi. I'm pretty sure it was tight with one of the guys on the team and everything. And, uh, and uh, then he was going to get traded. And the guy's like, Hey man, yeah, just, I'm really, this, this sucks. I'm, you know, it's just, I, I can't, I want to stay in touch with you and all this stuff. And I'm so sorry that you're getting traded or whatever. Can I get your phone number? And, and, and he was like, dude, I'll never see you again. As long as we live. <laughs> <laughs> It's, just, it's like it's, one guy's been through it a lot and another guy yeah. hasn't. It's just like yeah. a reminder. It's like, come on, man. I mean, it, it happens with everybody, you know, like you have these teammates that you're texting and eating with and, and yeah. you're around every day. Yeah. And then the off season goes by when you're the same organization, you're still, Hey, when you're getting down there, you know, like there's this constant communication and it's like a family and then they go to another organization and it's like, you know, you text them once a month or you check in and then three years later you send them a message. They don't even respond. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. That guy's gone. You know, I probably got like five to 10 teammates that I could send a text or call with, with confidence that I'm going to get a response within right. a day or two, you know, but there's, yeah. there's like 50% that yeah. I spent a shit ton of time with. Yeah. I felt like we were really good friends. Yeah. I'm like, all right, this is, this is, we got a 20% chance of even getting yeah. a response here. Like this guy's gone. 
they're like, yeah, whatever, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't get any different feel for the club. It feels great. And I mean, the, the atmosphere is the same as it's been for years. And the, the additions they made have all just meshed completely. I mean, they're yeah. all immersed right away. You would think they've been here for years, including Sean Murphy. He fits right in, even though he's kind of a quiet guy and serious fits right in. All the guys say he's great. No, it's great such guy. a big deal that the, the coaching staff, you know, Snit. Yeah. AA buys into it that all these guys contribute to the culture yeah. instead of kind of getting away. Cause sometimes you have this great group of guys and, and you got this manager that's almost working against it, you know, yeah. and then you lose one of the guys that kind of fought and balanced out that manager or coach or whatever it was. Yeah. They didn't like the way you guys were always joking around laughing, whatever it is. The fact that they have like their coach snit and the coaching staff's just as responsible as the players for this culture, you know, how laid back it is. Yeah how they focus on what really matters. There's no eyewash or bullshit. Yeah. That is super important. And having those guys come back every year. You know, yeah. I mean, you're not going to walk into the Braves clubhouse and feel uncomfortable because the first person you're always going to meet is the manager, yeah. the clubhouse people, and they all are on board with the same vibe. So it's yeah. easy to maintain. The style makes the catchers, the newcomers, all the catchers feel just totally at home right mm -hmm. away. You got Wash doing that with the infielders. You got EY with the outfielders. You got uh, French in the bullpen and 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 Cranny with the, all the pitchers. Um, it's like, uh, yeah, and, you know, and 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 Snit and Walt Weiss kind of sitting behind the screen and watching me. Everybody, it's just everybody is feels right at home right away, and uh, it's really the culture is it's pretty special. And Wash, Grissom told the story about Wash. By the way, he elaborated a little bit more about their workouts and. Uh, in New Orleans. And I mean, the kid kind of comes in with so much confidence right now. And he said, wash just it, it, it asked him about, is there one thing, one lesson he taught you? He goes, I wish I could name one thing. And he goes, it's just a whole mindset. He goes, everything, yeah, everything. It's just focus on all the time on be on everything. Don't let, don't have mental lapses and all that. And, and uh, he just was on him all the time. He goes like, if you, if you try to make, if you go to make a play and you take off like 1%, he goes, he could tell. He could yeah. tell you took off 1%. Like yeah. I was going, and he goes, and I was going to go make a play the other day. And I had, and I went down with one hand instead of two. And Wash said, So you were going to play, make that play, and you went, and you were going to go make it with two, and then you only went down with one. Why'd you do that? And he goes, Now, how did he even know that? He goes, He's in my head, man. Yeah. He goes, He is in my head. But he said, He's always thinking about Wash when he's going to make a play and what Wash told him, everything. So. I remember it wasn't like I so I watched Simeon go through the whole process with him. Yeah. Mark and Simeon when he was with Oakland. We watched it. You know, his yeah. first his first year with us, it, he was booting balls and we were like, I think they gotta move this guy to the outfield. And you know, now he's a right. he's just started he's he's a major league shortstop. Right. But we watched it and it was like it wasn't it was a running joke in the clubhouse and Marcus had a great attitude about it. But he just you just hear Wash calling his name and Wash had something else for him or more work and he'd be like, Here we go. You know, but he knew it was good for him. But you could just see the exhaustion on his face of trying to keep up yeah. and and practice and work to watch the standards. And he set that bar so high for him. You know, I mean, you could see he was exhausted, but then you got to see what that work turned into for him. And I, you know, I promise you, if you asked him today, he's 100% glad it happened. Oh, yeah. There were like three or four of those Oakland and Rangers infielders that like a couple of them gave their gold gloves to wash. Yeah. Instead, he made me the gold glover. Like yeah. Chavez did, Chavez. I think Simeon did. Yeah, but yeah, he's made it. Grissom, I think those those three weeks that he spent with him are going to end up being the most important thing in his career, probably. Well, I mean, he's got you know another six or four weeks of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's every every day, and it's not it's just the off season. It's going to. They're doing the same drills now, early morning before season. the regular. Yeah, it never stops. The same same drills with Wash that they did in New Orleans. They're doing here before the regular workout. Yeah, he's 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 ready to work every day. Yeah, so and the kid, the kids, the kids got a great work ethic, so it's a great combination. Yep, he wants to learn, he wants to be good. He's got a lot of confidence. He's got swagger, but he's also got a great work ethic, so it's a yep. great combination. I mean, he's he knows people are second guessing him, and it's driving him. He wants yeah. to prove everybody wrong and say, "I told you, get away, get out of my face." You know, that's the kind of guy he is. That's the best type of guy to be. Yeah, he's. I told he's you. Confident. I told you last episode about that lady that doubted me. You know, at my. My, my athletic store job, you know, she yeah. said, I heard her, I overheard her say one comment and I thought about that and it drove me to get up at, 
when I didn't yeah. want to run, when I didn't yeah. want to work, when I didn't want to do it, it's like, she thinks I'm not doing, you know, like, this is who she, she thinks I am. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to prove her wrong. And I'm still, I'm in the major leagues mad at this lady from an athletic store. You know, I mean, so that's sh- that chip on your shoulder type of thing. Those yeah. type of guys. I mean, it, I think everybody needs somewhere to pull that fire from. Yeah. And sometimes when you start to suck is when everybody starts believing in you. So if he has that chip on his shoulder about people doubting him and yeah, he's got he wash on his side, that's Mark, a good Mark, combo. Mark Bowman wrote a couple, wrote several times in the off season, leading right up to spring training that he doubted that he, he ain't really questioned whether Grissom was a major league shortstop. And he doubted going into the off season. He doubted that the Braves would actually do that and turn it over. Well, Grissom got wind of that. He either read it or somebody showed it to him or whatever. And uh, we were, had a scrum the other day. There's about 10 guys, 10 reporters, <laughs> females, men, everything, TV reporters, everybody. We're sitting around talking to, to Grissom the first day he talked to us. And he answered about 10 questions probably. And Bo asked his first question. And Bo goes, <laughs> I was talking to, I was talking to uh, Wash. And Wash said, told me that, uh, he goes, you watch. How good does, does it feel? to have that confidence in, that Wash has in you coming in and all this stuff. And and uh, you could tell as Bo's asking the question. He's waiting. <laughs> Bo's looking at him like, yeah, I know who you are. You, I know who, what you've been writing. And Bo yeah. finished the question. Vaughn went, yeah, it feels great. And he looked for the next verse and asked the question. <laughs> he, asked the, he elaborated on all the other questions, like these long answers, great answers. And to Bo, he just said, yeah, feels great. And then he <laughs> – it was funny. Uh, Bo asked him another question, but Bo, to his, Bo was smart. He, he asked him another question later in the interview. And so that uh, Grissom couldn't just give him a short answer, he asked him about Michael Harris and how, because they're so tight. And he said, how good did it feel to watch Michael Harris do the things he did last year? And Grissom couldn't just be short with him because he looked like a dick for me. And so right, he gave right. a great answer about Harris. <laughs> so, I, I used to, that funny. was one of my favorite dynamics when I was playing is, is when a writer would, say a guy couldn't do this or say something about a guy. And it, it, when it's good hearted, you know, when a guy's being a dick about it and just right. wearing a writer out, but when it, you know, if say, for example, Vaughn lays out in the hole and throws a dude out at first to win the game and he's just loud talking Bowman after it, you know, for an article that he wrote two years ago, right? you know, like I'm picturing right. two years yeah, down the road. Yeah, you think I was going to be a shortstop. He wins a gold glove and he's still talking shit to Bowman about it, you know, for doubting him. I, I love yeah. that dynamic when, when when a guy you know overcomes some of that and maybe the writer's not that far off you know like because they can right. only judge by what they've seen up to that right. point right and scouts but, didn't think he was either they thought he was going to outgrow yeah. the position and maybe he'll still prove to be right but in the meantime he's using that to drive man yep. that's part of that chip on his shoulder yep i mean that is fuel for the fire that's the type of stuff that gets you through the season too is when a guy zeroes in on something yeah. like that and every time he makes a play everybody's just sitting in the in the clubhouse waiting for bowman to walk in and grissom yeah. to loud talk him you know that that's yeah. great yeah anyway it's gonna be fun when the games start i'm gonna, i'm interested in watching and seeing him play because i know he's gonna play a lot him and rc will get all the all the they're gonna, both gonna play a lot because snit said we're gonna let the games we're gonna let them, let them decide in the game snit's not committing to him yet he said we're gonna that's why we're playing the games yeah so, but I, i'll be surprised if it ain't grissom though after all he's put the work he's done with wash and all that. Well, you can put all the work in, but I mean, it does right. have to, it has to If RC outplays in this spring, RC is going to get the yeah. job. Yeah. And you'd hate for him to be, I don't think that happened, but you're so focused on the defense that you roll into camp and hit 127. But I also think that after seeing him hit last year and knowing he can swing it and yeah. knowing what his upside is, you got to give him that shot if his defense is clean. I, I think he'll have a, probably a big spring offensively because you know the pitchers he'll face here and all that. Yeah. And he's gonna, especially early on, he's gonna face some guys that are gonna end up double A and and he'll rake against those guys. Yeah. So, all right, that's it. Uh, we'll do this again next week and um, and we'll have some games to talk about. So, and hopefully, cool. uh, hopefully Soroka will be back on the mend and uh, be close to getting on the mound. So, get the games. Well, 755 is real. To, he doesn't have to rush it. Nah, thankfully, this it's a good thing this isn't last year because he wouldn't have enough time. Well, even, I mean, for me, if I'm in his shoes, I'm looking at it like I just have to get back to what I was or right. close to it, and it doesn't matter where I start. Even if it's May, yeah. If he, if he starts the season in Triple A, that's no big deal. Of he's progressing, yeah. He just needs to be him again. Yeah. All right, 755 is real. 
We are out. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.